Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to module uh, 1 of the course time dependent quantum chemistry. We uh, have been discussing vibrational superposition state and we have shown that um, for the for cos equals uh, cos uh, function equals 1 uh, which, which means that at t equals 0 at the beginning of the superposition we have proved that uh, the density will be uh, localized or uh, more uh, at a particular um, uh, point which is we are defining as B point in the space. And uh, uh, we will uh, look at what will happen uh, next if we make the uh, cos value 0 and if we make the cos value 0 it means that I have T equals pi by 2 h cut divided by delta e 1 0. So, I have this psi x t density equals alpha by pi to the power half e to the power minus alpha x square plus 4 alpha cube divided by pi x square e to the power minus alpha x square. So, I have these two functions adding and if we add these two functions what we have is that all would be positive and adding these two functions it means that I have all are square basically. So, I do not have I have this function then I had another function but it is now squared that is why it will not have any um, phase like this negative phase like this. So, and if we add them together we finally get this which means that the density has now come maximum density has come to this middle point which is defined by A at this time. Similarly, if we continue and use minus 1 value which means that t equals now pi h cut by delta e 1 0, then what I get is that x t total density square is now just going to be e to the power minus alpha x square by 2 minus uh, 4 alpha cube divided by pi to the power 1 by 4 x e to the power minus alpha x square by 2 whole square. It suggests that first we have to subtract these two f functions. So, now we are subtracting this to a function that is why we have changed the uh, phase previously here the phase was positive and negative here. Now we have positive negative here positive here and we are subtracting. If we subtract it then what will happen? It, it, this two needs to be added now and uh, if we add them then clearly this portion of the wave function will be magnified and this portion will be um, destructively interfering and that is why we have now total density move to 
maximum density has moved to the position C. So, what we see from this uh, time dependent change in the density, the, the position of the atom, we see that the densities is changing from B position to A position to C and again it will be oscillatory. So, C will come back to A and B and this is the way densities is changing and that is exactly manifesting the molecular vibration. So, coherence has now allowed to observe the change in density as a function of time which can be experimentally observed the same frequency with the same frequency of the molecular vibration. But if it was staying at V equal 0 state that was a stationary state there is no way we could observe this uh, change in density or or um, uh, or this uh, frequency of vibration. So, coherence has a beautiful effect in um, in the experiment and uh, it one, one can use make use of the coherence to observe certain thing which cannot be observed if it is in stationary state. So far we have talked about quantum superposition and there is a uh, in optics often we talk about superposition and uh, by taking superposition of optical wave that is the plane wave we can create the pulse and often we discuss that pulse and it is important to introduce that immediately because very soon the superposition state quantum superposition state which is nothing but a wave packet we will be discussing wave packet and getting an idea from optical interference can help us understand better what is what does it mean by the wave packet and its propagation. Light uh, is, uh, uh, is a dual nature, it has dual nature when light exhibits wave nature it propagates as an electromagnetic wave. On the other hand when light is particle we consider its propagating as a particle. So, life has a dual character the kind of character we are uh, considering here is the wave character of light. So, light as a wave we, we, we have to see and the moment we see light as a wave we express its electric field in this following form. Here also just like wave function we see that there is a phase factor temp uh, temporal and spatial phase factor which is nothing but e to the power i theta kind of an expression phase factor. And one, once we see that phase factor we understand that it is changing the phase as a function of time all the time. This is complex notation in real notation one can express as cos omega naught t minus k z this is the real part and this is an oscillatory part. So, maximum field maximum uh, field strength is oscillating as a function of uh, space and time. So, this this is a picture which is taken at time let us say t freeze that time at a particular time suddenly if we if we if we think that uh, electromagnetic wave propagating through space and at a particular time I would like to know how the field strengths are as a function of distance we see that at this distance field strength is maximum at this distance field strength is 0 at this distance field strength is maximum but in the opposite direction at this distance field strength is 0 and so on like this way field strengths these distributions are. Similar pattern can be observed for time at a particular dist at a particular point of space if I try to plot the how electric field is changing as a function of time this is also similar way different time at a particular point it is its, its field strength is changing and that is the manifestation. We are talking about electric field because generally electromagnetic wave has both electric field and magnetic fields, but magnetic field strength is weaker than electric field and that is why we are neglecting magnetic field, uh, field uh, oscillation here. We are only considering the electric field oscillation. Now, when, we, when, when something is propagating there is a very uh, easier way to consider e to the power. So, this this phase factor is nothing but cos omega t and cos within bracket everything should be angle this is going to be an angle. 
So, what we can do is that when electromagnetic wave is propagating in um, linear space, we can represent its propagation in a circular dial that can be used and that is the way this angle the phase angle will be defined. For an example here we are starting from here at this point and then when we reach so basically from here to here when we reach here we make an advancement linear advancement but angular advancement made by pi by 2. From here to here when you go there in this linear scale we make another angle um, um, advancement which is pi and when we come here from this point to this point we make 3 by 2 um, pi uh, angular advancement. On the other hand when we come back here it is the 2 pi angular advancement we create. So, this linear motion this linear advancement and angular uh, angular advancement they are correlated and how it is co correlated that is something which I am going to show here. This um, Kz is the, is the is the term which is controlling the linear as advancement. So, if, if I advance Z plus lambda wavelength total wavelength then angular advancement would be 2 pi plus Kz. So, previously it was Kz, now I have linear advancement Z plus lambda that will give me angular advancement Kz plus 2 pi. So, it gives me K lambda equals 2 pi or K equals 2 pi by lambda k equals 2 pi by lambda. This, these are the relations which, which are uh, important uh, for all these um, plane waves. And uh, as, as I mentioned before that omega naught minus k, uh, omega naught t minus kz this part is called the phase of the electric field and that is very important phase is very important physical quantity. It is it's important physical quantity because if you think about this uh, phase red one color rep represented by the red color. Um, we see that this red color is repeating after a certain distance again is repeating which means that let us say I am in a, in a space light is propagating through the medium. When light propagates through the medium its electric field is oscillating in the medium and we have somehow managed to find out a red color light which will be turned on whenever the electric field is maximum which means that I am collecting the phase this one, this one and this one. So, red color will be blink after certain time red color blink after certain time red color blink and question is with what velocity this whole thing is propagating. In order to find out we, we, we can find out by taking the constant phase front. You see the phase front here is repeating. So, it is constant phase front and if I take the constant phase front it means that the time derivative of that phase omega naught t total phase is omega naught t minus kz it is actually uh, time derivative of the phase that is going to be 0 or in other words dz dt that is the velocity that is called phase velocity velocity of the constant phase front. Velocity of constant phase front that is Vp equals nothing but omega naught by k. So, this is the way we define the velocity. This is an important concept we have developed the how we define the velocity of a plane wave or light plane wave of the velocity is related to the phase that is the phase given here. So, I have been telling that phase is an important concept phase has information of the velocity. How do you get that velocity information? It is the constant phase front velocity that is why the phase is taken to be constant and with respect to time 
derivative of a constant is going to be always 0 and that is the way we find out the phase velocity. So, this concept will be used very soon in the superposition. Optical superposition which creates the pulse that is the pulse localized electromagnetic energy. So, this is called localized electromagnetic energy. Wave packet on the other hand it is the localized particle wave. So, these are the two conceptually different, but they have very close similarity and how do you create that? We create optical superposition by considering two slightly different frequency components, they are interfering with each other and there are places where they will be interfering constructively, there are places where they will be destructively interfering in the end the final pulse should look like this, a pulse which is localized electromagnetic energy in space. And when we look at this, the, the optical pulse creation will be able to um, uh, we, we will be able to define it because electric field, total electric field will be defined in following way. Total electric field is nothing but E naught e to the power i omega 1 t minus k 1 z plus E naught e to the power i omega 2 t minus k 2 z. Two electric fields, two uh, plane wave propagating along the same direction, but they have slightly different frequency and how the total electric field is changing. So, this is equivalent to uh, creating a pulse like this is creating a pulse. So, we are considering only two electric fields and if we uh, define now omega average equals omega 1 plus omega 2 divided by 2 k average equals k 1 plus k 2 divided by 2 and delta omega difference in omega between interfering waves is omega 1 minus omega 2 divided by 2 and difference in k equals k 1 minus k 2 by 2. If we do that then I will be able to plug that in here and I will be able to express this total electric field as E naught e to the power i omega average t plus delta omega t minus k average z minus delta k z plus E naught e to the power i omega average t minus delta omega t minus k average z plus delta k z. If we simplify it to some extent, we will be able to get this E naught e to the power i omega average t minus k average z multiplied by e to the power i delta omega t minus delta k z plus e to the power minus i delta omega t minus delta k z. This is complex, complex conjugate of each one. So, I will be able to write down 2 e to the power i omega average t minus k average z into cos delta omega t minus delta k z. So, and if we take the real part of it, real of this E total, then we get 2 E naught cos omega average t minus k average z into cos delta omega t minus delta 
delta k z. We get two different oscillation one is slowly varying one another one is fast varying component omega average is higher frequency. So, fast varying component very quickly is changing delta omega I told you that the frequencies are very small difference. So, delta omega is going to be very small and that is why this is going to be a slow varying component this is going to be a fast varying component. So, there are two the variations we see and that is exactly is shown here. This one is slowly varying component which is defining the field envelope, but this one is fast varying component which is defining the resultant um, the carrier wave this is this is called carrier wave. So, this part is carrier wave and this slow part is defining the envelope part and uh, if we if we look at this two then it is clear that for a pulse I have because two different phases the phase is defined by this part and this part. So, two different phases will be defining two different velocities again velocity will be defined. So, phase velocity of the pulse will be defined by the the velocity of the constant phase front of fast varying component. How can I get that? Clearly I had phase omega average t minus k average z this is the phase I take the first derivative to be 0. If I take first derivative constant phase front will repeat that is why first derivative is 0. It is the it is the phase it is the velocity of the constant phase front. So, if I take that then I get the phase velocity. On the other hand group velocity of the pulse what does it mean? It means that the velocity of the constant phase front of the envelope or slowly varying component. For that I will take the first derivative of this one this phase to be 0 and we get this group velocity. So, what does it mean fast velocity and group velocity is that um, uh, when I have a pulse I have an envelope function slowly varying envelope function and I have the fast varying components which is called the uh, carrier wave both are actually propagating through the medium. Question is what is the velocity of this envelope function and what is the velocity of this carrier wave. These two components are different and these two components will have independent velocities. So, sometimes it may happen that they are together they have the same velocity. Sometimes it may so happen that they have different velocity that is why one is proceeding quickly than the other. So, I will plot this pulse one more time. this oscillation is moving through the phase velocity, but this one which is part of the envelope function going through group velocity collectively what is the velocity they are moving forward individual average component how they are moving forward. So, these are the two components it is very important and we will be using this kind of concepts very soon in wave packet dynamics in the in the later uh, later different um, uh, modules. We have come to the end of this module in this module we have uh, introduced time dependence Oranger equation we have tried to understand the meaning of wave function we have tried to understand what we observe experimentally that is the density which we observe and in order to observe the density I need to see time dependent density which is nothing but the superposition state. So, if a particle staying in a stationary state 
its wave function is time dependent, but its density is not time dependent and that is why it is stationary state. In order to observe quantum dynamics, I need to have superposition state and uh, uh, for the for, for observing superposition state, uh, one, one key information the time versus delta E, this is inversely proportional to each other. So, if I create a superposition state or vibrational superposition state because vibrational spacing is very small, its time would be much longer longer uh, than the electronic superposition state. Electronic superposition state delta E is much larger and that is why it is much faster um, uh, time scale of the density de uh, oscillation we, we, we should observe. So, with this we will end this uh, module, we will um, continue discussion of time dependent quantum chemistry in next module.